keep our hearts full of that love of mercy so that we, we can have the forgiveness that we should have, Lord, in order for us to receive it. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, Christians have two options in their life. And I know I talk a lot about like Get a little while. I, I, I heard you say two options. I didn't hear what you said before there. Yeah, let me pull it up. We have, is that good? Yeah. We have, as Christians, we have two options in our life. And we can choose. The Bible tells us every day, choose you this day who you're going to serve. That's right. And it's, you know, this is the day that the Lord has done. We, we have to choose the, our, our, our uh, you know, in the mornings when we get up, we set the, the, the standard a lot of times of how the day's going to be. I'm not saying it can't change or it won't change. But we've got two options. We can either live in one leads to peace and one leads to stress. And, with you know, stress, have you ever seen a rubber band? When you pull a rubber band, it starts right here. And George, after a little while, it gets a little more on it, a little more on it, a little more on it, a little more on it. After a while, if you pull that rubber band long enough, tight enough, and hold it long enough, it ain't gonna, it, it's going to snap. It's going to only take so much pressure. And we are designed that way. We are, we're designed to, uh, to, to, God gave us adrenaline to be able to handle emergency situations. But when we are constantly, that adrenaline is constantly pumping in us, it's something that we don't need all the time. And we've got to learn, Georgia, if you've got your Bible, I'm going to be reading the first one, but I want you to go to Isaiah 64, 4. And I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to try to keep, keep it, keep it not real long this morning, give, give George some opportunity to preach this morning, but... We have to be led by the Spirit, or we have to at least be influenced by the Spirit. It has to influence us instead of what's around our environment. Right now, in our environment, the way we're living, uh, it would be no reason to have any peace at all because there's no peace in the world right now. In Proverbs, I'm going to be reading in Proverbs 3, 1 through 12. And, uh, I mean, it's the third chapter of Proverbs. Did you, did you want me to look at Proverbs? No, I'm reading I that. Have. Yeah, I already had that. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Thy presses shall be burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his corrections. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son in whom he delights. So he's given us direction and, and, and living confidently in a, it, you know, but it's a constant. You have to be ready for every, everything and have a constant reaction. And you know, I can't remember who I was talking to. I think it was it was BJ. I can't remember BJ Dawson. I can't remember who I was talking to, but that doesn't really matter. But we was talking about people and things when they change in their lives. 
the, they may not change. Their, their, their personality might not change. They may st battle still some of the same old demons that has been inbred in them from a childhood. But it's at it, some point, you know, God knows that it's there. He knows your life, but you are responsible for that instant response. And that instant response is that quickening. We talked about this last week. That quickening of the Holy Ghost that quickens us to, to not say something we might need to say, not say, to, to ask God to, to level us out where we don't have to, welcome, come on in, brother, where we don't have to, um, where we don't have to pay the consequences of, of bad choices that we might have to make. So this morning, my lesson is the two opposing options in our lives. One leads to peace and one leads to stress. And the whole time I'm talking, I want y'all to think about that rubber band. That rubber band, you know, it, 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 you can stretch it out, and if it never loosens and goes back, it stays at that pressure point all the time. And it, it, it stretches and stretches and stretches, and it's only been designed, just like we've been designed, to take so much and then it's going to snap. But I want to make another point. This is another point. After a rubber band has stretched so much, it loses its elasticity. And it, it weakens. So the more bad choices that we make in that instant, the, even though we may go back, our pressure may go back down, then you've got to remember what damage has it done, not just to our body, but to our spirit, to our mental health, to the people around us. We've got to keep all of that in, in, in check. When I was, um, I don't know how many years ago it's been, but I had a doctor, Dr. Lawrenson, and she did my surgery many years ago. And every time she saw me, I was tense. I was working children in school, I still had kids at home working, you know, working, driving up here because I, in the summertime, because I wouldn't put Lola in, I mean, Amy in a daycare. I would drive up here, then I'd have to drive all the way back to work and had to be at work at 6.45 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I remember almost every time I would go, she would go, can you do something to, res to, to, to release your stress? And I said, well, I didn't, I'm not aware of it. She said, stress is, is tearing down your body. So you see, I'm not teaching a health lesson, but I'm trying to tell you <coughs> that we have two office, opposite uh, options in our life. Not all, every day. The Bible tells us this is the day. Yes. Of course, the day is the day of salvation. The day is the day we make those decisions why we're going to be, what we're going to do, the choices we're going to make. Yes. We can't decide what we're going to do tomorrow and how our attitude is going to be tomorrow. we got to decide it every morning when we get up. And if yes. we get up with a bad attitude, usually that bad attitude is going to follow us the rest of the day. Yeah, That's why the Bible tells you to get up early in the morning. Uh, Leanne Stewart, that's Steve Ciello's sister, did a thing about fear the other day. And fear being, I forgot the term she used, but it, she was talking about fear and how it was from the enemy and how to get that in, that that enemy off your back. Because you know what, fear it really is a, a trigger. It's, it's just a, a, a reaction from prejudice or worry or whatever. You can just about take it all the way back to fear. Well, if I don't do this, this is going to happen. Or if this. If this person don't it's stop doing this, this is going to happen to them. Fear's the absence it, of faith. That's right. It's, it's a thief. It, it's a lie. It is a thief. It's a thief. A, a, a thief, and it's a lie. Right. And she made some good points. The first thing was to pray. Yeah. I'm talking about every day. Yes. The yeah. second thing to do is to fellowship. Yeah. And to come together in fellowship and pray with one another. And I forgot what the third one was. It might not have been a, a fourth one. But she said, turn off the TV. Yeah. Because there's so much that comes through the TV 
that we don't realize that we're swallowing and we're eating and it robs your peace. I'm not saying it's not okay to keep up with things or to watch TV. Me and George watched Heartland, the good uplifting TV show. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that comes and robs your peace. So, and as I'm talking, I want y'all to think about that rubber band. It stretches, it goes back, it stretches, and then sometimes it gets to a point, brother, where it's gone as far as it can be, and it'll break. My brother come to see me many years ago and told me, he said, I've come, and I didn't want to come here. He said, but I, I, the Lord has showed me that you're a pillar, like a, that holds up a bridge. He said, but even pillars, when they get under so much stress, it's going to fall. And when it falls, it falls hard. So I actually, if, you know, have actually told somebody, to, to have somebody tell me the same thing. So we have to obey God and leave the consequences to Him. We can't do anything. Brenda, you can't do a thing in the world about Carl, Doug, Sharon, your grandchildren, your neighbors, you, the, the consequences after you obey and you leave it with God. He is the one that deals with all the consequences. Him and the one that you might be praying with. Or the situation. Or the situation. And um, we have to do we have to we have to do that. The second thing, we have to trust the Lord for every need that we have in our life. Not just uh, you know, it's easy to trust Brenda when a deed when we got a freezer full of food, a cupboard full of food, or if not, somebody you know where you can go get something to eat. But what if there wasn't any food? What if there wasn't anyone to, to help you? We see that on the road every day when you get out and tra travel. And I, I'm going to bring out another point. What if you get a phone call and the doctor says there's nothing else I can do? What if, what, if you, what if you get a phone call and a loved one is gone? Charlotte got that message yesterday when Randall died. And she just lost a sister. I, I can't, I mean, I can't imagine because we lost Roger. I've lost a brother, but I can't imagine losing them back to back. Where do, we have to trust the Lord. We have to trust the Lord even in those needs, even when it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, people don't understand. I have a friend that was uh, that, that was of a, another belief and, and she just didn't believe in Jesus and, and because of the death of a child from somebody that she knew it caused her to, to come to the Lord and, and, and give her life over and dedicated her whole life to Christ. Her business is dedicated to Christ She's raised a child that is going to do wondrous things in the medical field. It's just amazing what we can, what happens when we trust God in every situation. And it's not always easy. Roseanne's daughter came on, and, and I know we're taping, by the way. We are on tape. And I, I tried to go live for being last day, but it won't work. So I'm going to tape it and, and do it for her. But her, Roseanne's daughter came on. And she was heartbroken. I mean, totally heartbroken. George, it was it was sad. And there was a, I, I'm sure, uh, Stephanie told me she was uh, falling. She actually told me, she, she, oh, I won't tell her, I won't tell that, because she did, I don't guess she would care, but she had a, actually had a little bump up. She was just bawling. I mean, it wasn't major. She just was crying and sobbing and praying. It was that heart-wrenching. And it put me on the spot because I was I had to do. But immediately, this is why testimonies, George, are so important. Yes. Immediately, I thought about my daddy when he went and wrapped his arms around Vader Ray after Vader lost his mother mm -hmm. and got down with him, George, where Vader was at. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later, uh, Roseanne's cousin posted a real child of God, a real friend, is willing to sit with you in a dark place. That's right. That's right. Somebody that loves you is willing to go. Brenda, I could come up to you, but if you just lost one of your children, I could come up to you and go, Brenda, just 
Get out of it. Snap out of it. You know, you love the Lord and I'm all joyful. That, that's not, Georgia, we can't do that. We've got to use some wisdom. But when I was put right on the spot the other day, immediately I thought about my daddy and what happened with him. When he said he'd come up and he put his arms around Beta's and Beta just melted. Now let me tell you what happened. Daddy took some of that pressure. Yeah. But who really put the arms around? Right. Who really took right. the pressure? Yes, he who did. really stepped in and, and helped with that blood? Where two or three are gathered. Where two or three are gathered. So right. what happened then was we've got to be able to turn things over and trust God even in somebody else's circumstances. That's right. And then one of the ways that we tr that one of the ways that we build trust is through trials. Y'all know that. Yes. yes. And uh, uh, after after uh, Hope came on and cried like she did, Brenda, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, my faith just a little bit went. Oh God, you know it's. I, you know it was. It, you know you're human, and it won't be just a little while later. Her cousin got on the page, our prayer page, and said. I remember when Roseanne said, I'm healed. Yes. I am healed. And you want me to tell you what it done to me? Very instantly, my spirit pepped up, and I went, you know what? God is still in control of this situation. God is still the one that is in control of this situation. So, hey, Kathy, come on in. So when we, when we, it builds trust when we see our trials, but it don't just build trust when we go through trials. Brenda, it builds trust with with uh, when you went through your trial. I remember some of the things that you said that that you know when you went down that that aisle and you said, "I've always wondered what it meant that when the Lord, you know, you could take deadly poison and it won't hurt you." And she was able to get past that point where she made the decision to take that treatment. Yeah. Because why? Because she knew the word of God for one thing. That's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. But you yeah. see, her trial, but then when I came along in the trial, I remembered what you said. So we that's why it's so important to give the testimonies how we win. of how we win. That's right. So that's, right. that's when we remember the Lord and how trustworthy He is. And we can rest in assurance knowing that He will keep His promise. The other day we was online and and it was just so many. It was cancer, it was death, it was depression. It was we were just getting hit like this and we were live. And all of a sudden, this song came to me. So y'all can help me. He is able. He's able. I know the Lord is able. I know the Lord is able to carry me through. Listen to this. For he has healed the brokenhearted, and he set the captive free. He healed the sick, and he raised the dead, and he walked on troubled sea. For he is able. He's able. I know the Lord is able. I know the Lord is able to do what? To carry, carry me. Yes, Lord. I'm going to tell you what. That covered every situation. That covered the sickness. That covered death. George, that covered cancer. That covered the child's broken heart. That covered, it covers everything. Yes. Because we have to, we have to, to, to do this. George, I'm going to get you to read Isaiah 64, 4 and a half, if you will. You'll read it live. Just the fourth verse? Yeah. It says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, neither have the eye seen. O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for them that waited for him. The next thing we're going to talk about is waiting on God and the directions that he gives us. You know, we think about timing. I, Amy had, a, Amy got, a, I was talking to Amy on the phone the other day, she called me. She had to go get gas. She was running a little bit late. It must have been an accident. Her car was running low. 
Mama, I don't know whether I should drop Lola off first. If I drop Lola off first, maybe I'll get her there on time, and then maybe I won't be, I can just stop and get gas, and then all of a sudden I just said, Amy, you're already going to be late. Just stop and get your gas. So she stopped and got her gas, and I was on the phone with her, and it stopped at $8. It wouldn't run to put no more than $8 in. It clicked off. She said, Mama, it, it, it stopped. It just stopped. I said, well, honey, I don't know what's wrong. She said, well, let me get off and, and see what's going on. So a few minutes later, she called me back, and I can't remember exactly what Lola was saying, but Lola was saying something, and, and uh, Amy was frustrated, and then Lola got frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it came to Amy. She said, you know what, Lola, if this hadn't have happened, how do we know that down the road we might not have been in an accident? Right. How do we know that this wasn't God going before us? Yes. So this was meant to be. And we're going we're to gonna trust God that this was going to be. And when Mommy said this was a bad day, it's not a bad day. It's probably a really good day because God took care of us. Yes, he did. Yes, if he did. we believe that he directs our path, sometimes we think we know the best course of action that we're supposed to take and that we know more than God and we know that this but just like what George just read he knows our future yes, he right. does. George George will you read it one more time because listen to what our future entails for since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by ear neither hath the eye seen O God beside thee what he has prepared for him that waited for him. We have no idea, but since the beginning of time, since the very beginning, God has already orchestrated. George, will you also look up 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and just read 8 9, 10 in just a minute. 2 Corinthians, ninth chapter, 8 and 10. So, when, when, if we really understand and it's we got the, the, the sorry, ninth chapter. Uh -huh, second Corinthians ninth chapter, the Lord always will be acting on our behalf, no matter what. Yes. No, no matter what. He's always got what's best for us. So what I'm telling you. In those verses again. It, uh, just uh, just read, go ahead and read eight, eight nine, nine and ten. ten. Go ahead and read it now. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sowing, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Yes. Any way you look at that, that is a bountiful yes, it is. verse. Yes, it is. It's plenty, George. Yes, it ain't yes, just yes, a yes, little yes, bit. Yes. It says bountiful. Yes. You know what bountiful means? I could fill this up with fruit and put one or two down here, and I might have enough to get by. But if I had a plenty, George, in there, I might go make some jelly, jams, eat it, and have some I can eat raw. Brenda, it would be called bountiful. And yes. that scripture says bountiful. That means that he's got a lot for us. He's got plenty for us. So he gives generously to us when, we're, when we follow these, these things. Obedience, trust, patience and waiting on God. And then when, 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 when we do this, he gives us generously. I talked to Betty yesterday. Betty Glasgow. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm concerned about him. I'm very concerned about him. But she wanted to know. She, she misses us. And I, I'm thinking, we did Zoom church, and now we come back to church, and she's not able to be here. But she wants to be here so bad. She wants to be in church so bad. Do you know how many people that are physically able to get up and go to the house of the Lord that don't want to go, that don't want to be here, that don't want nothing to do with it. And so I believe God's going to bless her for it. 
I believe he's already blessed her for it. She used to sit in the church quietly. She hardly ever had anything to say. And once she started releasing and, 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 and giving advice and, and, and stuff, God started multiplying and, and, and taking care of her needs. We need to accept, I don't know what time it is, but my phone's not here. Okay. We have to live that Christian life because it's Christ is the one that's living in us. We, you know, I asked y'all a few weeks ago, what was, what was it, what did it mean to be a Christian? It's not anything that that's in us, brother. We have to live. George, do you mind looking up some more? Look up Galatians two and twenty. You see, the truth is that we have that. That well, I won't let him read it because it's good. So I will just wait for him to find that. Read it. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, oh yeah. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yes, Lord. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That is, Ooh, I'm going to tell you something. If you're not stirred by that, I'm going to tell you how. The results yes. of that is not failure. Right. Right. The results of that is going to be miraculous. That when he lives yes. through us, is when we start seeing things move. Mm -hmm. We're not going to see. We can try and try and try to convince somebody of God or convince somebody of what's right and wrong, but the best example that you could possibly set is to let Christ's light shine. Yes. George, I used your illustration not many weeks ago on one of our prayer pages on Zoom, and I saw it light Roseanne up. It is worth talking about it again. This room could be totally, totally dark. And you could take one of them little tiny pin lights and you could shine it all over this room. And you would see that light. But you could never get enough darkness to overshadow that light. There was, there's no such thing as enough darkness to take, the, take that light away. And I saw it when it hit her. I saw it hit her. And I know that she's living off of this. I know that she is living off of this because I know her struggle. She's struggling. But Doug, I know that she's living off of promises and George truths that's come through different people that is encouraged and gave her hope. Yes. And you say, well, why give hope to somebody? I always like to use Wanda Mitchell, Wanda Mitchell Lee, as an example. I'm not going to lie to you. Me and George sat up there day after day after day, and we watched a woman that was about my size dwindle away to almost nothing. But the whole time she was laying there, even with chaos going on around her, George, one thing that you can, you'll have to back me up on this. She was peaceful in her walk with the Lord. And she never stopped believing that God wouldn't deliver her. Those three big Hebrew children, when they were thrown in the fire, they said, we don't know if he will deliver us, but we know that he can. Yes, yes, Lord. And Brenda, let me tell you what we saw. We saw a woman die in peace. Absolutely. Yes. Another one is Rachel Lynch. She was tormented. Yes. But when that peace came, Kathy, you saw it. I never got up there. I stayed with her a lot when she was in the turmoil. But Brenda and Kathy saw her at that peace. You went, both of you went up there. It didn't matter. Let me tell you what, what she went out with. Hope. Yes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now you tell me, if you're going through something, 
Would you rather be going through it with hope and faith or just, I just, you know, I just might as well just, I mean, just, I'm going to give up. No, I'm That's not, not in Roseanne's vocabulary. No. You know, I love what your dad is. Let Jesus fix it for you. He knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have his way, and he will fix it for you. He's got all the answers. He's got all the power. He's got all the patience and the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness. He's got all the long suffering to, to, to set any man free from his sins and allow him entrance into eternity with our God. And he's given it to us freely. But as you begin your, your, your message this morning, the choice is ours. It is. Yours, you don't still mind looking up some passages for me? I, I, don't, I didn't look them up this morning. I had that first one ready and I, I you know, if I, I want you to look up, because this passage right here is probably the, it's hard for me to even stand still. It's John 17, 23. The gospel of John? Yes, John 17, 23. It's because you see, this is how much he loves us. Every, almost every time I close out my page, my prayer uh, ministry on, on Facebook, I'll say, if nobody hasn't told you today, I love you. But more importantly, God loves you. Yes. Right where you're at. Just like you are. He didn't make a mistake. That's right. You're, you're, you, he loves you. Read it, George. I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Yes. yes. How wonderful is that? Yes. He loves us, George, in our imperfection, in our problems. He loves us unconditionally. Yes, the other day, a girl came on that's in a domestic but we're on a private page. It's the only thing I hate about the taping. That's in a domestic situation. And she said, I need somebody to love me unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And I responded back, George, not in a, I said, honey, God loves you. He will never let you down. He'll always be there for you. <laughs> we got to know that God is in absolute control of every situation that we're in. Yes. We're not yes. victims of our circumstances or anybody else's circumstances. Somebody else that might you might feel like just brought you into their drama. We know that God causes all things to want to work together yes. for our good. How can you believe that when you're walking? Through a flame. Well, that's exactly what those Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego went through. Yeah. They said, if, if you don't bow, we're going to throw you in the furnace. And they said, well, you go ahead and do it because we're not going to bow. Amen. Don't bow to your circumstances. Don't bow to that lie, George, that we started out talking about. Don't bow to that fear. Don't bow to that stress that fear causes because stress and fear has its limits and after a while it breaks why do you think there's so much suicide why do you think that people walk out of, out of homes and lose children or marriages or, or just I mean why you know uh, George's sister we're coming up on a year of her dad and it's hard. I mean, I, I mean, literally, when I think about George, I feel a pain in my heart because I loved her. She was only 49 years old, and she had a troubled life. And I'm not telling you whether she left this world, her life was perfect. But when I, the last time I talked to her, 
which was after Christmas, and she died in, I think it was May, though. Second. So we're coming up on a year. She, I asked her, I said, where are you, Tom, with the Lord? She said, well, fellas, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't perfect. That's a honey none of us are. I said, but the world is getting worse and worse and worse. Where are you? That was my last real conversation with her. Brother. I said, where are you with the Lord? She said, you know all them left behind books you bought me when I was to spend my time in jail? I said, I do. She said, I still read them. I still got them. And she said, Phyllis, I know that God has changed me. Well, she told me, I might not be where I need to be. I might not be where I should be. But I brought this up for a reason. She was a tough cookie. You hear people talking about how tough they are. She was a real deal. Linda, that was a real deal girl. I mean, I heard some stories. Because I, I, I've, I've sat with her beside her at Wake Man. Almost the only thing they didn't have was a handcuff to me. Somebody had to hold her down to keep her from running. If I had to go to the bathroom, they had to send somebody in there to keep her from running and slipping out of the hospital. She was the real deal. And you couldn't hardly break her with that son. You couldn't talk about that son. That son that she had left, you couldn't say his name. I said it one time, and she hit the glass of the jail, and I said, stop it. I said, God has sent another woman. He loves your son so much, and he sent another woman to be a mother to a child that you can't be a mother to right now. And her name is Lisa, and we're coming up on a year of her death. I said, God loved your son so much that he sent a good woman. I said, she's sober when she drives him to school. He's clean. He's got nice clothes. And do you know when Tony died, Lisa was the last one she saw. And Lisa rubbed sun lotion on her back and said, Tony said, I don't feel good, Lisa. And she said, can I fix you some soup or something? And Tony said, no, I go home. I'm going to lay down for a while. And she went home and died. I'm telling this story because George, she lived a troubled life. But in the end, even that one that she beat the glass over that day ended up being. And even Lisa told me later, she said, I know this sounds weird. Because Lisa was a good Christian woman. She said, but she's my best friend. She's my best friend. And I don't know what I'm going to do. She's gone. She found her a home close by to her and Bobby. She was married to Tony's first husband, only husband. So Tony could be there beside her boy and their boy. And now Tony's other son is living, as far as I know, on the property down there with Bobby. And that was her first husband, and I'm sure if there was any father, it's probably as close as anybody. I won't plan on talking about this, but I'm trying to tell you something. God changes things. Yes. He can take a mess that's in somebody's life, because her life was a mess. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to get up and demonstrate. I know where she's at. God showed me just like God showed where Rodney was at. She was laying in a casket, and she had on a jean jacket, little vest, and a purple shirt, and I'm sure she had jeans on. Because they went out there, and Kathy, they was going to dress her all up in a dress. And Lisa, that was married to Tony's husband, said, you're not putting her in that, because that's not Tony. We're going to let her be Tony. And when they said it, did, did anybody want to get up and say anything? I wanted to so bad, but I didn't want no confusion there. I wanted peace. And I sat in my seat, and I put my head down, and I was about to bust. And I looked up and told me, y'all can believe me or not, 
Tony was standing at the top of at the, and this happened, brother, this quick, in a second. She had on a purple skirt, and she was looking at me, and she was dancing. I saw it in my spirit. And Linda, I knew then. Everything was good. Daddy, I knew then. Yes. Kathy, I knew then. Doug, I knew then. Good gracious. George, when I told you your other sister was with you, and it just floored her. She didn't even know what to say. But my husband needed it, and I told him. I said, George, I gotta tell you something that just that I just saw. Now, why am I telling y'all this? What has this got to do with choices? She made bad choices, Doug, a lot of part of her life. But even in her bad choices, when people were praying for her, her son was took care of. He sent a woman that looked after him and took care of him. And she was sober. And Tony wasn't. And I reminded her of that in a bad place. And after I reminded her, Kathy, she calmed down. And then at the end of her life, she ended, they ended up being best friends. That's God. Only God, Only God could do that. That's right. Only God. But why? And I'm going to tell you why. Because of that last conversation I had with her. And I like it. I stole it from Joyce Myers. I might not be where I need to be. Praise God, I ain't where I used to be. She come from a mighty dark place. Yes. She was a real deal. So we can we can take that and we know that God absolutely loves us unconditionally. Yes, yes. And I'm going to close out with these two things. you got to make a personal time for God. If you want that peace, George, if you want that peace instead of that, stretch, that stress, I can be, I can get up the other morning, uh, I didn't feel like doing this, this thing, but Daddy, don't, she won't get mad at me, I, I was going to get bad and come on, and it was the day she couldn't get on, she tried, she couldn't get on, she could not get on to save her life, I didn't have nothing prepared, and I bet you that page, George, that page filled up, 15, 20 people from over, I mean, just, just hungry. And I, I didn't have nothing. And I and then I went and got that that um, thing from Leanne, uh, Steve Seller's sister. I did that. And then I just started talking, and people started. And I have got more response, probably one of the best responses I've ever had. Why? Because George, you got to get out of the way. Yes. You got to you got to be ready whenever uh, there's a need. It's in season and out of season. It's just gone. You have to be ready. Now, tell me how you be instant. It's got to be in you. The or it's going to come out of you. Right, You've right. got to take that personal time to medicate with God, to, to, with God and take that and make it the priority in your life. Yes. I've heard George, honey, I've heard you say this so many times. Well, I've done all I do now. I've been mm -hmm. preaching. I've done all I can do now. I guess I'll pray. That should have been your first line of defense. <laughs> I had a friend, Patsy Champion, and we, she said, we had been gone, and she just lit up when she saw us. She was so glad we were home. And she said, we've been needing prayer. And we got right out there. And I don't mean in the parking lot in the back. We was right parked right up there where they was in the handicap parking space. And we walked on the floor. And I said, if George said one, it ain't nothing like right now. Amen. And we join hands and we let it rip, Kathy. <laughs> you've got to not be ashamed and you've got to be ready. you got to recognize that the gospel of Jesus, it, 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 is, a, it is what? The power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. It can penetrate a hardened heart. Amen. It can transform a life. And it can change an eternal destination. Yes. And I could write Tony Compo Fowler in right there. It, if you recognize Christ, it can penetrate a hard heart. I remember her banging on that window. And then I remember that last conversation that she had with the one that she was banging on the window about. 
And you know what? God changed that hardened heart. Yes, and listen to what happens to you. It transforms your heart. It transforms your life. And it changes where you're going to spend eternity. Yes, thank you, Lord. It changes where you're going to spend the rest of your life. Daddy used to call this Georgia Jack the dressing up place. He said, we're not here. This ain't, this ain't the end. This is just where we're dressing up to get ready yeah. to go meet him. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I just won't prepare. I won't prepare with a lot of stuff that we're seeing. But I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like um, it, it, it's helped my heart. Because I, it, it's helped my heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for the Lord. Lord, I thank you for this group of people where we might not be many. But God, we've got one missing from us this morning, and that's Betty. Betty number one. And she's number one in our life. She's outspoken. She's opinionated. But she's ours. And God, I'm asking you right now to heal whatever it is that's going on in her life. Lord, let them find it and let them help her. Lord, whether she's healed by your hand or by a doctor's hand, God, we ask you to touch her this morning. Touch Roseanne, God. Yes. Lord, I ask you to be with her. We were thankful to hear that she was better. T touch Verna this morning. Yes. And Kathy that's getting ready to go through things, God. We're asking you, God, to touch these women. Touch Charlotte's heart this morning. This lost her brother. And ZT and the rest of the family. God, it's hard losing a brother or a sister and they've lost both and I just asked you recently and God I ask you Lord to touch us and Lord the rest of this service God we give it to you God I ask you to be with George as he brings the word and, and message and his song Lord to be with him Lord let him when he opens his mouth let you come out and we thank you God for this day that you have made in Jesus name before we uh, before we start, George, I got news yesterday that uh, that uh, Carolyn's boyfriend had a stroke or something like that, and you know I don't wish nothing bad on nobody, no one. I might for a minute, but you know what I'm saying. I understand. I, I mean. I just, we want to get it. Yes, that's just it. That's right. I, I pray that he'll get all right. I mean, they had even said that he might not even talk or walk or something again. And I, I just, the Lord can move in, yes. in any situation. Yes, and he loves yes. him just as much as he loves me. And he does. Right. And yes, you does. know what? It's so good that you brought it up, though, because cause this message that I got is going to go right on in. Confirm exactly what you're saying is possible with God. And not just with them, but you know, <clears throat> our brother uh, Wayne, he's trying, he's fighting every day. He's believing every day. He's trusting every day. He's going on carrying on every day with one side of his body not wanting to obey his brain. But I got this for you. I know, I know one who can yes. and will and does yes. all the time. That's right. All the time. So we're going to have another prayer and Doug will get you to stand up for that one when we do stand in for uh, And you know, that might be kind of like what Lisa said. It's kind of weird because we're talking about a man that that's, uh, that is with Doug's ex-wife. Yeah. But you know what? It doesn't matter. You know what? It's time to get it's time to get this world out of the way. First of all, take a good look at the world scene right now and see how good man has done with the world. Not too well. I mean, look, without faith, we're dead. That's it. But I just want to bring up a few things. 
we read out of Acts, uh, the 19th chapter, I'm going to start with the 11th verse, anybody that wants to follow along. Before he starts, I want to ask y'all something. Do y'all see the swelling and all gone bad in his face? Look how much better he looks. Yes. I'm so thankful. I lost 12 pounds in three days going on that diet of hers. Isn't that but, but it's a lot of fluid, y'all. He's yeah. that well, that's what's moving it. I do, I do feel better too, by the way. All except for muscle cramp from getting down. But, but you look, Lord, I'm just looking at you now. You look you look so good standing up there. I'm so happy. I just had to tap. I had to bring it out. Boy, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I'm going to tell you, like, like you know, there wasn't nothing wrong with my looks to start with. That's a lot of <laughs> He's as furry as a speckled puppy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, guys. A little heading. You know, give you a little heading. Want, you don't want me to give my opinion. <laughs> no, I don't, Kevin. It, it might take up the rest of the sermon time. <laughs> you know, they give you a little heading sometimes before they go into the, into the scripture here. It says, God's miracles through Paul. First of all, let's talk about Paul. Paul, first of all, we know that Judaism didn't do Paul no good. He took his whole life's teaching and training in, in being a Pharisee. That's what, that's what enabled him to stand and hold the garments of the ones that stoned Stephen to death. That's what enabled him and justified to him in his mind to go to the elders and get papers to go and spoil the, the church of Jesus Christ. His mission, his number one mission, he was zealous, zealous to do it. And, he, and the devil gave him the papers and the legalism to do it. And he was headed out to do it. Hallelujah. But the one thing happened. God said, no, devil, you ain't having your way. Let me just turn my flashlight on here and have him go talk to Paul. Yeah. It all changed. So we know that Paul and even, even the Jewish religion, which all this is based on, was not, that, that, that wasn't the answer. The answer is one name under heaven by where man can be saved. That's right. It's Jesus Christ. Yes. So now I'm going to go on. Chapter 19 of Acts, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought onto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. And certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and the chief of the priests, which did so. And an evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was left upon them, overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on all them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it, to be about 50,000 pieces of silver. 
So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Paul, enemy of the church. He was the chief prosecutor for the very scribes and Pharisees that watched Jesus go to his death. And he, 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 they, they were yelling for them to ask for Barabbas, not Jesus. Paul. Why? Why? Why was Paul chosen? Paul had conviction. Paul had purpose. Paul was not a hypocrite. Paul thought he knew the truth. Jesus Christ was the truth and is the truth. And what made the difference in Paul was the truth. What makes the difference in us is the truth. What could make the difference in this whole world and every problem that's in it is the truth. What's lacking today is the truth. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Archaea to go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered on him, Timothy and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And at the same time, there arose no small stir about that way. For certain, a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our way. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone in Ephesians, but also throughout all of Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worships. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gainus and Archias, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions, in travel, they rushed them in one accord into the theater. And when Paul, the theater would be like the center of town, I guess you would say. And when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chiefs of Asia, which were his friends, sent on to him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, some another, for the assembly was confused and the more part knew not, wherefore they will come together, just like it is today. Mm -hmm. Most people, protesters that join all these protests, they don't even know what they're protesting. They're just in there for the glamour or whatever. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, and the Jews put him forward, and Alexander beckoned with his hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Deanna of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesians, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Deanna and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet 
and to do nothing rashly. For we have <coughs> brought hither these men which are neither robbers of the churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby ye may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. All it's just, it's just, you know, I, I watched President Trump thing last night. He had a, um, he pronounced it for me, Phil. How you want me to say it? Rally. A rally. He called it a wally. I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. Anyway, I watched his, his rally in uh, Washington, Michigan. And it's probably the most amount of people I've, that's ever been to see. I, I, they, they, I mean, they are, people are so hungry. They are so hungry. And you know, he's still the arrogant Trump, don't get me wrong. He's still got full of himself. But one thing that he is doing is he still loves this country. He's still standing for, for the God-given right for us and our Constitution and all this stuff. And he got the truth on his side. Therefore, all those thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people, they're not, they're not, they're not doing bad stuff. But all it takes is one, one instance where someone starts a, a, some kind of a, a movement uh, where, where the wrong is behind it. I'll tell you what, it's they're burning the city. Yes. Yes. The difference is, just like it was in Paul, if God is on your side, who can be against you? I'm trying. Now, when I first started reading the text today, it said that special miracles were done through Paul. Paul, who himself wrote in another book, Me, I am the least of all the apostles, for I persecuted the church of our Lord. He was doing good. Right. So, church, if special miracles were given to someone like Paul, what about today, every one of us? Those of us who are dedicated to living this life and being transformed daily, not saying we're perfect, not saying that we're perfect, church. None's perfect save one, and that's our Savior, and he's given us his grace and, and said that we are the children of God because of who he is, because of what he does. So it's got nothing to do with us being perfect, though. <laughs> Nothing to do with us being perfect. It's got to do with the intent of our heart at any given moment of any given time in our life. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of acceptance. Today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of, of confession. Of confess, confessing that you do believe that Jesus Christ is the only one true Savior of the world. He, he is the Son of the one and only God that's ever been, that's ever been. There are no other gods. They are all figments of imagination. They're all lies and heresies. There's one God, the Father, and His Son, Jesus, and His blessed Spirit, which has been imparted to each of the believers according to the measure of faith that they exercise. Yeah. You can have a thousand dollars in your pocket and you go you can go to a 
you can go to an auction and you can want something so bad, but you decide you ain't gonna bid but one dollar on it. <laughs> you ain't gonna get it. Oh, you got to use the resource that you got. And it's the same thing with your Christian walk. What do you want out of your Christian walk? Salvation is a gift. Yes. But what kind of power do you want? What kind of reputation do you want? What kind of what kind of reconstruction of your life do you want? What do you want out of your Christian life? Like I said, salvation's a gift. tell you something. You got to take the faith that is in you and you got to give it out daily. Yes. Right. And the way you give it out and I'm going to tell you exactly the formula you need to use. This is the formula that you need to use with the faith that is within you. The formula, the mixture, the catalyst to this, to this chemistry I'm talking about it's called obedience. Yes. Flat out. Obedience? Obedience to who? Obedience to God. Obedience to His Word. Obedience to the transformation that takes place every day in our life. Obedience to that still small voice. That voice that will not harm. That voice that will forgive. That voice that will stay and endure and endure and endure and endure along with someone who needs love yes. and mercy and grace and forgiveness and understanding. Yes. You know, Phyllis was talking about Owen wrapping his arms. Yes. He probably didn't even say nothing. He probably just wrapped his arms around. That, that's what did it, Kat. It was a great thing he said. But when he understood, when he just, he, you know, he wrapped his arms right. We sing that song, you know, where, 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 uh, it says, uh, he wrapped his arms, know just how to hold me. He came down from heaven. He walked a mile in my shoes. Every one of us need to have our eyes signal on him. On who is Christ? What was Christ? How did Christ respond? How did Christ serve? Well, just moments before he, he was betrayed by everyone, even his own disciples, he was down on his knees with a, with a, 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 a servant's towel washing their feet. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. Even the one that betrayed him. Even the one that betrayed him. Right. Yes. I think he was betrayed. Church, church, we, got, we, we, got, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to have, we got to pray for some endurance. Yes. We have got to pray for some, for some of that super salvation that we sing about in that one song we sing. <laughs> super salvation. I'm talking about premium. I'm talking about that that only comes from the throne of God through Jesus Christ our Lord to them that believe, to them that receive, and to them that sow in anticipation thereof. Yes. Love, 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 just a little bit of love. Oh, yeah. Love, 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 just a little bit of love. You don't need a lot. Just use what you got. Love, 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 just a little bit of love. Simple. So simple that an arrogant world cannot begin to understand. And this world is tamed. That's it. Kill. Destroy. Threat. Hold them under fear. Hold them in bondage. Make slaves of them. That's the way this world works. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are a peculiar people. 
especially to the world. <laughs> to the world, we are very peculiar. Mm -hmm. But we're awesome to them, too. You know why? You want to know why we're awesome to them? Because, because I guarantee, I guarantee the king said, now, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I, I, I really like y'all, and you, you left me no choice. Now I got to throw you in the fire, or else I'll look like a fool. You're so peculiar, you, you, you're just your own worst enemy. And he threw him in the fire, and then he went and looked over the rail, and he said, Woo! There's four people in there, ain't none of them bound. Acceptable to anybody else. Yeah. Everybody else thinks no better than I am, which is true. But the thing about it is, is this: it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yes. I'll never see heaven's gate. I'll never be entered in without the blood of Christ oh, and His testimony. 
live in my life. Yes. I will never hear, enter in, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes. Enter in to your Lord's glory. And neither will you, and neither will no one else. And I don't care if you've been a Buddhist for your whole life. It doesn't matter what kind of tricks and, 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 and whatever, whatever miraculous things that you might impress this world with. I'm sorry. If Buddha really was real, really, really, really wise as they say he was, at the end of his life, he, he confessed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That, to me, would convince me he was all that. Amen. Or all our any of the rest of them. Thank you. I'll tell you what. you got to put aside your own prejudices and your... Yes, no. All that stuff. All that stuff. Yes. You've got to give it over to Christ. You've got mm -hmm. to trust and believe beyond any shadow of any doubt that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God yes. who died and rose again to oh, die no God. more. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he shook them in the devil's face. Yes. And he says, we're going down. Where's the power? Going down. Oh, yes, he did. Going down. Ooh, yeah. Yes, he's going down. Yes. He goes down every day yes, in flames. When anybody, any one of God's children, mm -hmm. resists him and draws near to God, he's going down in flames. Every time. Every time you choose the truth over a lie. Yes. The devil loses. That's right. Why do you think it's so frantic right now? Why is it so frantic right now? Because let me tell you, he knows it's time to wrap it up, man. He he's found out all along that God was God and that he was right about all the repercussions that were going to take place because of sin. And he knows running out. He's running out of time. Yes, he is. We need to love one another. We need to pray, Betty, for Kathy. We need to get you up here. We need to anoint you every you time you come me. around us. Yes, and we need to claim your victory. We yes. need to claim good news uh, for you. We need to claim, claim healing for each other. Yes. We do. Yes. We do. Uh, constantly. Yes. What does it mean? It's, what does it mean when it says pray without ceasing? It means, it means worry, worry, no, worry God no. constantly no. with these requests because yes, because you know He will provide. Yes, you yes, know yes, He'll yes, provide. Right. Does a baby stop crying? No, not until it gets what it needs. Hallelujah! Right. Then it shuts up. Then it gets Ooh, comforted. Yeah. Then it then it gets happy. Yeah. Then it will learn something different. But until you feed it or change its diaper, it don't shut up. That's right. And I've seen adults just about go crazy. You little queen girl. George going up, Mama. No matter what we do, she won't stop crying. What well, you what have you, what have you done, son? <laughs> Or what ain't you doing, son? <laughs> Mama, we tried everything! <laughs> but in the end, he went to another room and cried and prayed to God. And she got to <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you Whatever go. it takes, is what you do. Let Jesus fix it for you. Yes. Because he knows just what, what to do. do. Yes. Whatever you pray, don't let it be nowhere else but exactly to him. That's right. Let him have his way. He'll tell you. He'll lead you and guide you in how to be and what to be and what to say. And he will fix it for you. Yes, he will. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many went to the cross and died? Let them humiliate and just, just I mean, kill it. Yes. He had to suffer torturous, torturous death. Mm -hmm. 
And then three days later, he popped up out of, out of the tomb and said, Hey, Mary, how you doing? <laughs> go, 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 go tell the followers. Go tell, go tell my followers, you know, the ones that run the other night. Go tell them uh, I'm, I'm back. You know. I'll be checking in on this is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. And I tell you, the battle is won. That's right. The battle's already won, says little David. Says, says me, says you, says anyone. When you when you start finding yourself in a complaining spirit, a spirit, a wanting spirit saying, why am I going through this? Or why am I going through that? You better quit saying why. I used to say why. I used to say why so blindly that Phyllis would separate herself from me. She'd say, I ain't getting around you. God's going to strike you let dead with bull <laughs> Church, I'm telling you that, that I, I know. And look, right now I'm telling you. When I find myself there, you know what I do? I say, Lord, thank you for everything in my life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for life itself. Thank you for my wife, my kids, my family, my friends. Thank you for all this, this, for being able to see through all this sinfulness in this world and know that you are still God and you still reign and you still hold the reins and you're still going to bring it through and you're still going to be a new Jerusalem. There's still going to be a new heaven and a new earth and there's still going to be no remembrance of any of this crud ever again to all them that believe. Hallelujah. Woo! You want to get high, get high on the truth. Get high on that that's already been, already been predicted. Already it's in store. And we're just going through the motions, hallelujah. And he counts those worthy that suffer for him. It says count it all. Count it all joy when you fall into diver temptations. Knowing that temptations. Strengthens your faith. It strengthens your patience. It makes you rely more on God. It gives you an opportunity to suffer along with Jesus Christ just as he did for righteousness sake. That don't sound right to the, to the, to, to the carnal mind. The carnal mind don't like to hurt. It don't like to suffer. It don't like to go without. It don't like to be degraded. Yeah. But we don't follow the flesh no more. Right. We're born of the Spirit. Yes. And everyone that's born of the Spirit is just like the wind that blows through the land. Yes. Man, it might blow and cause a tornado and tear up 50 houses over here, and it might be a gentle breeze on down the line, giving somebody peace and joy. Yes, Lord. Church, I'm telling you, we serve an Almighty God. Yes. And I tell you what, I tell you what, He is, he is closer now that he, he has been in the past. We are further along delivered straight. You can believe it. Don't you know, it was a six-day journey through the wilderness yes. to the promised land. Yes, Guess what? They wandered around in the wilderness lost as, as peacocks for 40 years. Mm -hmm. yes, but when they finally got close enough and they saw the promised land. <laughs> and it blew his Woo, don't you know? Mm -hmm. But even then, they didn't want to do what they were commanded to do. Because <laughs> he told them, said, take up arms and go take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. What, fight for it? Are you crazy? Oh my gosh, oh no. Why not just get rid of them like you knock a hole in a rock and give us water? I mean, you can do that. Wine, cry, moan, play. Yeah. Wham. Duh. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is so good. He is so. <laughs> we talk about being long suffering. We don't. We we'll never even ever comprehend the essence of that phrase. Long suffering. Long suffering. Woo! Talk about patience. Woo! Talk about patience, man. 
God is so good. Yes, he is. All the time. Yes, God is All the time. Now, before we, 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 we'll do a song or two, but, but I, I'd like everybody to let's, uh, let's get together and let's have some prayer. Yes. And let's do some just good old-fashioned obedience following the examples of Christ. Can we come to the back? Like yes. Yeah, yeah. Go to the back. Let's go yeah. to the back. This is Brother DeFroy. There That's you go. True. We're in the front. Right. Right. You are in the front. First will be last, and the last will be first. That's what God said. The back will be the front, the front will be the back. That's right. Ah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. 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 <laughs> Pass it around. Everybody gets some Pass it on. around. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's get over here with Barnum. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys. Well, ain't that good to be in the midst? Let us join hands. Let us touch. Point of touch. Lay in hand. Lay it on of hands. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, follow the example of anointing with oil, Lord. It's the act of anointing with oil and the mixture of the faith, the prayer, trust in your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you do not lie, you cannot lie, Lord. You are, you mean what you say, you say what you mean, you do exactly as you promised, Lord, and there's no way that man can ever claim any difference. So, Lord, we're asking for these deliverances. Lord, we're asking for these moves, Lord. We're asking for these feelings, Lord. Lord. We're asking for the growth spurt, Lord. We're asking for this concentration, Lord. We're asking, Lord, for the deliverance from all the afflictions that this world and the enemy would try to come against your church with, Lord. Father, we're asking you to rain that. Lord, we're asking you to clear Kathy. Lord, we're asking you to clear our minds of doubts and suspicions and, 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 and unbelief, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, to heal us. Lord, make us, make us that peculiar. Lord, we proclaim to be, Lord. Give us that power from on high. Let the light rain fall upon us, Lord. Give growth unto our spirit, man. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We serve you to the best of our ability, Lord. And your ability that takes over. And we are more than victorious. In your son Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you, God, for this good. We thank you for this move of the Holy Ghost. The Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and we know, God, that your word is true. Your word is true. I saw we take it out. I know you did, Lord. And I know if you did, Lord, that he is your word. But we're not going to give her over to death. We're going to turn her into the hands of life. And she's going to be for life until you call her over to Jesus. We're going to leave in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Simple childlike faith and simple Hallelujah. obedience. Amen. Obedience to the Lord. Hallelujah. Who came and set the way for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He gave all. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your We took. We took. We took. We took. We took. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to call the musicians and the singers, all those of you who are willing and able, come. And let's make a joyful sound unto our God. Yes, sir. Already fired. It can be a Holland joyful. That's the same thing. It can be a Holland joyful. I mean, it's not running.
And uh, I was trying to find that song bigger than all my problems, bigger than anything. But you know, I think the best song that we could sing today for you is Mama's song. It says, well, I, I'm mostly upset because we couldn't go to Jackson. We did have a prayer this morning. We did call that out. Yes, just Wayne lost his brother and they can't go. But, you know, through all, this song will cover it all. Claim the blood. Claim the blood. I claim the blood. You know, we can claim the blood over sickness, health, sadness, everything. This was Papa's favorite song.
I'm going to get late. Yeah. 